Hey everyone, Greg from CarID.com here with Richard at the 2019 New York Auto Show. Richard, you gotta be excited. I am really excited, Greg. We were here last year in 2018 for the first mm -hmm. time and there are just so many new cars I wanna see this year. What are the things you wanna see? I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the GT500 and that Jeep Gladiator. Pretty nice choices, but I'll tell you, you've gotta be excited like the rest of the world is. We're here to see the reveal of the C8 Corvette. GM's mid-engine beauty, it's not even a secret. That car's not here. Mary Barra drove it through Times Square the other day. She might be driving it, but it's not here. I didn't know that. All right, listen, if the C8's not here, you know what an Alfa Romeo guy I am. I do know you love your Alfa. I love my Alphas and the GTV Coupe. I saw a rendering online the no, other that's, day. No, Richard, that, they haven't started making that car yet. It's, it's not, not here? It's not here. This is, this is very embarrassing. A little bit. Oh my God. All right, well, you know what? Last year, Greg, yeah. I was all hot for that BMW i8, that all electric sports yeah. car. Yeah, so BMW is bringing this here, well, their newest electric well, car. BMW is like not here, period. Like, they didn't show up this you year. You mean the brand isn't the here? The brand is like nothing. They're just. I give up. Greg, what else are you here to see? Well, there is a few other different things that I want to see. One of them is the Rivian pickup truck. All electric pickup truck. One of the first things that I've ever seen like that. I'm really curious to check that out. I don't know if you have anything else on your mind. Well, I, speaking of electric cars, I know the Audi e-tron is here and Mercedes has their new EQ, all electric vehicle, but we're both hot for the Gladiator. Let's start there. Let's go ahead and check that out first. We'll see you guys there. Hey Greg, you've got to be very excited right now because we're standing in front of, I think it's one of your favorite vehicles. I am. I've been anticipating this all new Jeep Gladiator for quite some time. I'm one of those few guys that when the Comanche in the, from the early 90s just kind of disappeared, all waiting for Jeep to finally bring some type of variant back and now we have the Gladiator. You are so young, I'm surprised you remember the Comanche. I remember the Comanche. Hey, listen, we know that Jeep is on a roll. Wrangler sales are right there, right through the roof, aren't they? Oh, the new JL are selling like crazy, and we knew they would. They improved it in all the right ways. So would you agree that with this Gladiator, we got the best of both worlds? You got all the features yeah. of a Wrangler with a pickup bed? I think this is gonna hit a great market because you do have all those features of a Wrangler. Solid axles, front and rear, 33 inch factory tires with the Rubicon edition if you choose to go with the Rubicon submodel and a pickup bed. So you not only have something that's gonna be phenomenal off-road in any situation, but you can haul all your gear. So we know pickup trucks are really hot right now. So you were just saying is if you buy a Gladiator, you get the pickup truck, mm -hmm. and what else? You get other things that the Wrangler gives you like- Same uh, thing, the removable doors, the Sunrider soft top comes standard on these things. If you want, you can upgrade it to the hard top that's still removable. So one way or another, you have all the great features of a Wrangler with all the utilitarian features of a pickup truck. Fantastic. What about the engine? What do we know about the Gladiator? So for so powertrain? right now, it's still going to be the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Uh, we do know that Jeep is going to offer a diesel at some point. Wow. Um, we're waiting to see exactly when. I'm not sure of the exact date. Well, and you mentioned the Dana axles. Now, are all Gladiators all-wheel drive, or is that something that you... You can get a standard Gladiator Sport or a Sahara in a part-time all-wheel drive system. The Rubicon is going to be your traditional front and rear lockers, Dana 44 axles. This is going to be the most off-road equipped sub-model out of the entire lineup. Okay, and starting price on the Gladiator is about what? I'd say it's about 45 or so for a standard Sport, which I think, you know, compared to most pickups and how they're priced, I think that's right in the ballpark. Yeah, and you load it up, I think I've seen some things online, maybe 50, 55 for... Yeah, that's... You can if you really, really load those things fully equipped, but considering F-150s, Silverados, they're selling for about that. I was about to say, so full-size pickup trucks are right in that price range anyway. So you think you think Jeep might uh, struggle to get this thing, uh, you know, going in the marketplace? Not even one bit. I think these things are going to sell like crazy. I would personally own one of these. And I think the factory is going to be going 24-7. What else can we say about this beautiful new Jeep Gladiator? When it hits dealer lots, check it out for yourself. Hey, I'm going to drive his when he buys one. That sums up our review on this uh, beautiful new Jeep Gladiator pickup. All right, everyone, we couldn't come to the 2019 New York Auto Show without seeing this car. This is Ford's all new GT500. And they've rumored that this car was gonna come out for the past couple years, and they recently unveiled it at the Detroit Auto Show, but this is the first time that I'm seeing it up close and in person. 
Now, there are no actual horsepower numbers. All we know is that's going to be way north of 700 horsepower. This car has been built and designed to take out all of the Mopar products like the Hellcat and the Demon, and I personally think it can do it. This is a purebred race car that you can buy at your local Ford dealer. From its carbon fiber wheels to the largest brakes possible on any American sports car, that's a record for this thing, to the quad tip exhaust. I mean, this thing is set up for the drag strip, for the road course, and even just your long-term road trip on Route 66. I personally love every facet of this car. The one downside is that it only uses a automatic dual clutch transmission. There is no manual option at this time, but I did also read a rumor that Ford will in fact make them equipped with a manual transmission if they get enough people asking for it. So hopefully that's the case. I'm going to be one of them. Here we are at the 2019 New York Auto Show and we're standing in front of the 2020 Lexus RCF Track Edition. Now, you've really got to give Lexus credit. They are, as you know, a luxury division of the Toyota Motor Company, known for their mainstream front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive sedans and crossovers. Look at this beautiful sports car. Five-liter V8 engine, 472 horsepower, rear-wheel drive, zero to 60 in under four seconds, a lot of aerodynamic aids on the outside, carbon fiber, just an all-around stunning vehicle high performance, really knocking it out of the park with this one. This Lexus RCF Track Edition 2020, as I said, oh, if you have to ask the price, just a smidgen under $100,000. But in my opinion, if you got it, it's really worth it. All right, guys, this is one of the first things that really caught my eye here at the New York Auto Show this year is this Ford Ranger that is fully outfitted with Ford Performance parts uh, from the rock sliders here, the roll bar in the bed. It's got rigid lighting all the way around. And I also noticed it's got a BDS kit in the front with Fox 2.0 coilovers. Uh, this is a nice all-around setup. Now, it's all Ford Performance parts from the front and rear bumper, but I'm really digging this entire truck. We are standing in front of the brand new Mercedes EQC Sport Utility. What's so special about this one? It's all electric. Let's give you a little bit of background. Mercedes is launching a sub-brand calling it EQ. That's going to be all of the Mercedes all electric vehicles. This is the first one in that lineup. All right, early specs are the vehicle is going to have about 400 horsepower and an expected range with the batteries of, they've published a number of 279 miles. A Mercedes spokesperson says this vehicle will go on sale next year in 2020. Price has not been announced, so that's the new Mercedes EQC, the first vehicle in the Mercedes sub-brand of EQ, their all-electric vehicle lineup. Now, believe it or not, this vehicle to my left is Hyundai's all-new Sonata. And maybe you're thinking the same thing I did, because this does not appear to me like your average Sonata. You think of a Sonata, you think of your normal A to B sedan. Well, Hyundai really stepped up their game with this all-new design. From the whole back end of the car and the beautiful, elegant lighting going across the trunk lid to this amazing lighting up front, and especially the new front fascia and grille. This is no longer your just standard A to B commuter car. This is a really attractive sedan. So two thumbs up to Hyundai. I think they did a fantastic job. We are standing next to the all new Audi e-tron all-electric SUV. And we knew this day was coming. 
Tesla, which has really made a name for itself with its electric vehicle lineup, had that market to itself for a number of years. But as other car makers see Tesla's growth and success, they want a piece of that pie. And here's Audi's first attempt at doing just that. So this really beautiful Audi SUV has twin electric motors, has about 400 horsepower, and has an expected range, according to the Audi spokesperson I spoke to, of 204 miles. Again, the brand new Audi e-tron all electric SUV at the 2019 New York Auto Show. All right guys, here we have a 2019 GMC Sierra 2500 pickup with GM's all new multi-pro tailgate system. Now check this thing out. It's got a few different modes and a few different positions that you can position the tailgate in depending on what you're hauling in the bed. Number one, if you hit the top button, you can simply fold down just the top quarter of the tailgate to either use it as a workbench platform or if maybe you're loading a bunch of boards of wood in here and they're gonna overhang over the tailgate slightly. But another great feature, if you are loading a bunch of lumber, flip this bad boy up and there you go. You almost have an extended tailgate system right there built into the factory tailgate. Not to mention, if you want to put the whole entire tailgate down, you also have the option to then lower it again and use this as a stepping surface to get up into the bed of your truck. Pretty cool stuff right from General Motors. We are here at the Nissan display showing us the history of the Datsun and later Nissan Z car, sports car. Now, 1969 was an incredible year in automotive history. And yes, I was there. I was a teenage boy, didn't have my driver's license yet. But 1969, Datsun introduced to us the 240Z. This was revolutionary. Here was a car that styling wise competed with the best from Europe yet had Japanese durability and reliability all at a price that undercut the best from Europe by thousands of dollars. Now Nissan has done an incredible job bringing an assortment of vehicles down to show us, really displaying the whole history of the, of the, uh, the Z car line. So we've got a 240Z, we've got some 280ZXs, we've got the 300ZX, we've got a 300ZX Roadster over here. We have another 240Z, We've got a two plus two. We've got several more 280ZXs and 300ZXs. When you get to the 2019 Auto Show, be sure to come downstairs and check out the incredible display from Nissan showing us the history of their incredible Z car. I'm here with Greg at the 2019 New York Auto Show. We're in the Lincoln booth. We're looking at the new Lincoln Corsair. That's a new name for us as well as for you. Greg, what do you think of this car? I think it's absolutely gorgeous, uh, but I wouldn't expect anything less from Lincoln. Now, you actually told me something interesting before. The name Corsair is actually has some history to it. It's an old name with the Ford Motor Company if you're old like I am, <laughs> and I was a real little tot. The Corsair was actually a model name for the ill-fated Edsel, which Ford built from 1958 to 1960. So I am in the Wayback Machine talking about that. But this vehicle used to be called the MKC. Mm -hmm. It's Correct. built on the uh, skate platform. Skate platform. So yep. What do we know about the platform? Um, we do know it's a all new platform, same as the Ford Escape. So it's a little bit wider as well as longer wheelbase than the, than the older Escape. Um, we know it's going to be a similar power plant. It's going to be the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, making roughly around 300 horsepower, which is plenty to get this thing down the road. And it's also going to have a full-time all-wheel drive capability. So we know the powertrain is really great. As Greg said, it's on the new Escape platform. But we, last year in our video, you gushed over the Lincoln Navigator. Oh I mean, you God. love that interior. I really do. And they have a, use a lot of design cues from the Navigator in this vehicle. It Absolutely. is so incredibly elegant on the inside of this car. Anything from the push button gearbox located right on the dash to the wood grain, to all the chrome accents, it, it's gorgeous. I love it. 
I gotta tell you, I'm actually impressed. Given the size of this vehicle, it's really competing with the, the compact sport utility segment. But Lincoln is on a roll, as I said earlier. They've got a proven powertrain, they've got a new platform, and they've really got, really are nailing the whole American luxury thing. Yeah, I mean, if it were me and I were gonna pick an American luxury brand, I don't know, I'd probably give Lincoln a try. Check out the new Lincoln Corsair, because we think it's a winner. <laughs>
This vehicle is really beautifully trimmed with full leather interior. One of the more amazing features we have here is this full-size screen in the center console. Frankly, it's one of the larger touch screens I've seen in any of the new vehicles. We know all manufacturers are going that direction. Subaru is really trying to lead the way with that. So we've got the new Subaru Outback, redesign, good power, good ground clearance, good room in the back, great safety features. Be sure to check out the 2020 Subaru Outback. All right, guys, so we have spent a full day here at the 2019 New York Auto Show. We've seen a lot of cars, a lot of new ones, a lot of different ones. What was your favorite out of the entire show? Can I take a breath first, Greg, because I'm exhausted. You know, I'm a little older than you, just, just two or three years. No, I had a favorite car, and it was really hard to, to choose one particular favorite, but that Rivian all-electric pickup truck. The R1T. I think, frankly, that's a sleeper. Yeah. I think that's something that's gonna come in. Nobody else has an electric pickup truck. And there were a lot of other nice cars here and trucks. And I'm not even a truck guy, but that one really grabbed me. You know what, I have to agree with you there. That thing was incredibly impressive. I can't wait for it to actually hit the roads and start seeing those things and really what they can do. Hey, this is Richard at CarID.com. And Greg from CarID.com. Thanks for spending the day with us at the 2019 New York Auto Show, and we will see you guys next year.